Well, um, I'm going to continue a theme, which is lying to you. As a matter of fact, our first presentation is Mobile Tech. New yearly sponsor, we'd like to introduce Mobile Tech, Director of U.S. Operations, Peter Barclay. Oh. Yay. Just think, pizza, beer, and wine. Yeah, actually, I have a come. Uh, Pete, where are you? Right here. So I met Pete back in uh, August, uh, I think, the 2009. And he was talking about Disruptathon and all this other stuff. And he was talking, oh, yeah, I got 20, 30 members I think are interested. And well, look, today we're at 1,745. It's a great group. And I congratulations, Pete, on the great work you have done with that. And we're equally excited to be part of this group and sponsoring this. And as a sponsor and seeing that we have pizza, now that I see that we have six sponsors up here, we're going beyond pizza next time, right, Pete? That's right. All right. Sit down, dinner for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking. All right, so um, what I'm here to do today, I just want to. Uh, we last week um, you had our CEO come here and just kind of introduce Mobile Tech to you and what we were, and um, we kind of want to give you a little more overview this week uh, or today on what we do and why we're here, um, knowing that you guys are mostly app developers, we're actually into the mobile web. And we believe firmly that the mobile web is the future. So hopefully as we move forward, uh, you can use our tools for the customers that want to go the Spartan way, if you will, and not going into the full hog trying to get applications done. So um, we kind of give you an overview quickly. Oh, with me before I start that, I, there's a couple people here from Mobile Tech that I want to introduce. Uh, and first is Brian Palangan, he's our sales rep. So if you have any questions about you want to get the product, so forth, meet Brian. Uh, we have Heather White, who is uh, helping us with our UX work that we do for our customers. And then Remy Sture is coming in from Norway for his here this week. And he's one of our developers that use the platform every day. So some of the projects that you're going to see today have been developed. Uh, by Remy. So uh, what is uh, mobile tech? It's uh, basically we have products that allows you to do mobile web publishing and development. Uh, we have today about 300 customers uh, and most of them you have probably not heard of because we are pretty much well known in the Scandinavian market by here in the US. Uh, we're fairly unknown and that's our goal by being a sponsor of uh, Modev is to change that and, uh, and be in front of you uh, all this year and at the different events that we're doing and uh, hopefully be front of mind rather than back of mind and uh, hopefully we use our tools. But Washington Post, uh, Voice of America, uh, and Roadrunner are some of the big names that you probably have heard uh, of. Um, we have overall about 300 customers. We support about 57 languages. Uh, that's in two-bit uh, character languages as well. Uh, being VOA, we're pretty much in every part of the world. <coughs> and um, we have about 1,400 sites and we're continuing to grow every week. Uh, in the 2011, we did about 1 billion impressions through our product. Uh, and I don't think that is counting the Washington Post numbers and uh, I'm not sure last time I checked they were doing 30 plus million every month through their mobile web. Uh, we have 40% market share in uh, Scandinavia but more importantly is that we started out doing mobile web back in 2005 when no one really cared what the mobile web was. So we started out doing VML, XHTML, and uh, trying to figuring out what kind of devices are this. And we have over time built up our framework to support all kinds of different devices. So it's now we support HTML5, we can do a lot more exciting things and we can recognize all kinds of different devices and develop a, really provide customers with a optimized experience no matter what kind of device that they're using. Uh, and then we have offices here in DC, but our home office headquarters is in Bergen, Norway. And uh, as uh, Christian mentioned last time, is that we have, Christian has moved here to Washington, so hopefully uh, Washington DC will be a new headquarters eventually. Uh, these are some of the sites that we have developed. Uh, I see kind of all kinds of different things, but it's using HTML, HTML5, VML, etc. And we also support uh, uh, iPad as well. So if you have different things, you can be able to um, 
using our product, you can go to all kinds of different uh, devices. Um, the way that we kind of um, develop our products is that we really do care about the user experience. So we have five key components that we use to kind of build that experience. And that is uh, runtime, what kind of uh, environment are you on? Uh, what kind of browser, etc. cetera, uh, what kind of uh, platform. And then how are you connected to us? Are you connected via wireless, 3G, 4G, whatever it might be. Uh, location, integrating that into the user experience as well. Uh, user profile, how are you, uh, is it kind of um, personalization and those kind of things that you want to do, we can enable that as well. But most importantly, what kind of device are you using? Uh, and uh, are you using a tablet, are you using a PC, what are, what are you trying to develop? And we want to make sure that that experience, no matter what device it is, from a basic uh, Nokia all the way up to the new iPhone 4s, etc. Uh, but some key principles that we have in the way that we are approaching the mobile web is that we want to make sure that we're anywhere at any time on any device. Uh, we want to make sure that adaption optimization uh, is always in a mobile context. Freedom to create working business models, but most importantly is that our framework, we're not trying to put everyone inside of a box. We really want uh, you as a developer to be creative with these tools so you can do a lot more things than what you're actually seeing in front of you or the tools that we provide, I should say. But we have two main products, and uh, we have a mobile frame SDK. And for this, if you're a developer, this is a tool that you're probably going to be using that would allow you to have access to the whole uh, uh, library of uh, uh, JSPs and uh, also all the widgets. And you can do plugins to the different uh, CMSs out there. Uh, if you are kind of like me, uh, I'm not the tech guy on the team. <laughs> uh, you will use the Publish, which is a GUI-based product, and you can build a whole site using this uh, product as well. But I rely on my developers to develop custom pieces for me that I can put into this Publish. So what we have as standard is just part of it, but then you can do all those custom widgets that you can then implement into the product. So you're not limited to what the product actually has. Um, and we deploy, deploy it in two different ways. Uh, if you are using the developer kit or the SDK, you can put it in basically integrate directly uh, with the CMS. And then option two is using a feed-based and uh, using uh, the GUI, mobile publish, and uh, frame as well as for customization. Most of our sites today are probably in the Second over there, uh, option two, Washington Post, uh, the Globe and Mail, and some of our larger newspapers are using the fully integrated existing CMS. Um, with the two different products, we have two couple of key components that are across the different products. And advanced device detection, uh, I'm not sure if you guys know Luca Pasani, but, uh, or Werfel, or heard of that. But it's basically a database for how you're figuring out what kind of device you have, what are all the dimensions, and so forth. And that database today contains about 8,000 makes and models, uh, confirmed this afternoon with him. <laughs> uh, and so we have all the details about different devices. So anything that, we, that you code, all our widgets will fit to that, and we know exactly what you, we are dealing with in terms of serving up the, the pages. So we do server-side detection and then deliver the optimal experience for that customer. Um, we also have an image server that's based on the device detection. So we're not sending the device heavy images. We're just trying to, how do we streamline the delivery as much as possible so we get the minimum footprint in what we deliver to that customer. And uh, maybe that's not so important here in the US when we have wireless and we have 4G and everything else. But if you have international customers, this is so important <laughs> because data is not free for the rest of the world uh, like it is here. So it's, uh, I don't know if you travel internationally, but uh, Boingo gets a lot of money from me. Um, the other thing that we also provide in this is the standard widget set. And we have basically about 23 core widgets that we have and that we make part of our kit, and that's standard for both the frame and also for the publish that you can use. And basically in these uh, widget components, they're made up of uh, markup, JavaScript, and CSS. Uh, and it compresses and caches, so we only deliver what's uh, 
optimal for that device. So we're not going to be sending that device all kinds of markup that it can't um, work with. So you will have um, in these widgets, you have three different ways. So we're not going to send iPhone, etc., type of things down to VML phone. So we're trying to make that footprint as small as we possibly can. Uh, and all our widgets, the standard ones at least, are developed so they can go with iPads and iPhones, etc. Uh, then you have for the feature phones, if you will, and then for the very basic phones. So that way we take care of the long tail. But like I said, don't think inside the box, create your own widgets. So what you have in the tool set, having the frame, you can develop really what you want to do. Um, so let me take a deep dive into what the frame SDK is. Um, the frame, uh, the mobile web framework or the, the SDK is really a standard JSP tag library that you get access to. You get uh, device detection as part of that. You get the image server and then you get the architecture for the widget engine which is uh, all the JavaScript, etc. The way uh, then that this house is architected is that you have the tag library then you build your widgets and from the widgets you can create templates that you can then put into the publishing engine or you can connect it directly to your CMS. Uh, also when you get the SDK you get access to our documentation and uh, distribution uh, developer site. Publish uh, is uh, basically a complete publishing delivery solution. Uh, it's a, a web-based portal and if you have feeds, you're doing RSS feeds, it's out of the box, you can uh, deliver pages right away. Uh, it does uh, multi-language, so if you have multiple languages that you're dealing with for your customers, you can easily put that in there. So it would, uh, oh, you want to do Norwegian language, you want to do Swedish, you want to do Arabic, it doesn't matter. Uh, all of that is supported inside this tool. And you can run inside of each instance uh, several brands and sites uh, we have uh, our instance that we have is actually running all our sites on it today. Uh, it's our cloud-based uh, CSS management as well as HTML5 depending on the device. Um, from a workflow perspective, we don't want, really want to be in the way. Uh, from our, in the way of producing mobile or like being a, uh, how, do, how do I say, Mobile is just part of what you're doing for your customers, and if it becomes a chore to manage, people are not going to want to use it. So our goal is trying, how do we make this as streamlined as possible? So what we do, at least from a publishing piece, is that you have the mobile web, and then you have your whole, everything that you set up for that, the CMS, your presentation, etc. And then you will just send feeds over to the mobile, and then we would deliver that through the mobile experience. And uh, user experience is key, and it's like, why are we guys doing it? something separate? But the key is that when you are, just like you guys are developing apps, you're developing an experience that's very different from on your iPhone on how you would do it on the iPad. While the same thing applies to the mobile web and the web in general, you have different user experiences depending on what kind of device that that person is using. So if you want to get the users to really interact with your products, uh, for the most part, you would probably have a different experience for your iPhone versus what you have for your iPad or for your tablets or your regular phones. And that's the way we also kind of believe, and that's what this platform helps us achieve. So the GUI uh, is uh, basic, just a basic GUI front end where you kind of define what your pages are going to look like, uh, how you're going to arrange them, um, and we have, well, it's, I don't know if you can really tell what it looks like, but uh, we're more than happy to give you, what's that? Couldn't pick an English one? I could have picked English, but I think everyone knows Chinese, uh, so uh, we kind of went that way. It's kind of show we can show some different characters. Uh, also, uh, this probably is one of the more important components is that if you worked with other frameworks, they kind of hide all the CSS away from you. and. Hey, it's right here, so you can edit your own CSS. You can manage it the way you want it. So if you want to do something special, you can do that. Um, and some of the other frameworks, they kind of hide it, put it inside the widgets and so forth. This allows you to be creative and do what you want to do with that particular site. And especially for the US market, where we have a lot of these smartphones, having access to the full CSS makes a world of difference. 
I've only been on for 12 minutes. <laughs> Alright, 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 so you got, uh, like I said, you can just put in uh, RSS feeds into it and then you can develop a site. If you just have RSS and you can get that from your CMS, we can build the site basically using this tool in just a matter of hours and get it up and running. And of course, uh, you can get a preview, etc. of the piece. Uh, and uh, actually that kind of wraps it up. So. How about that for timing, right. Grandma? <laughs> so, <laughs> I can take a couple of questions. I know I just kind of flew through this, but I know you guys are here to hear about other things and so forth, and we're kind of an infomercial, but we hope that this is kind of putting us in front of your mind, and uh, you come and talk to us. Uh, you can, uh, can reach me, uh, Brian or Christian, the CEO, anytime, and I'm sure, Pete, we're going to put this presentation out somewhere. And uh, so people can take a look at it. Uh, and uh, really, I always want to say thank you for your time. And uh, Pete and Jeremo, thank you very much for putting this together. And uh, nice to meet everyone. And uh, please let us know if you have any questions. Oh, and for anyone that was asking, this little thing right here on my lip uh, was actually a hockey injury that I had on Monday. <laughs> so I just want to clear that up. <laughs> Did you win or lose? Well, they Team, actually, I, I, I got too mad that I probably would have done something bad, so I left early and they <laughs> lost. So it's a temper thing. Uh, so, but I appreciate your time. Thanks very much.